Hi everybody, chapter of book reading time, The Magic Bone, Be Careful What You Sniff For, written by Nancy Krulik, illustrated by Sebastian Braun. We read chapter seven last, and we know that in that chapter, Sparky and his new friend Watson escaped from the pound. So here they are, they escaped, they're waiting. Remember, if you recall, they had to hide in a telephone booth as the um, bad guy ran past, and they um, hoped to go find the bone, both take a bite, and then return to Josh. So let's see what happens in Chapter 8. Chapter 8. That was close, I gasped, as Watson and I finally stopped running long enough to catch our breath. I'm tired and thirsty. So is Watson. I can tell by the way his long pink tongue is hanging out the side of his mouth with little drops of spit all over it. Ding dong, ding dong. What was that sound? I try to bury my ears in my paws. Don't worry, Watson tells me. That's just Big Ben. I look around for a big dog named Ben, but I don't see anyone. It's just me and Watson standing near a garden of flowers. Well, who's Big Ben? I don't know, Watson admits. I never met him, but he makes that banging noise all day long. You can hear him all over the city, Watson says as he lies down on the grass and sticks out his tongue. It sure is hot out here. I know what you mean. I start rolling around on the cool grass. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a two-leg watering flowers with a long green snake. It looks just like the snake Josh uses to water our flowers back home. Wiggle, waggle, water! I bark excitedly. I run over for a sip. The two leg turns to me and cups his hand at the snake's mouth so I can drink more easily. The water is cold and wet. Slurpity slurp, slurp. I can't drink it fast enough. Sparky! Watson barks nervously. Get away from him! He could be the pound! But I know this two-leg isn't from the pound. He would have grabbed us by now if he were. I guess Watson has figured that out too, because he slowly walks over and takes a, a few quick sips from the long green snake. Then he backs away. It makes me sad to see Watson so afraid. I can't imagine what it's like not to trust any two legs. But I guess it's because Watson's never had a two-leg to love him the way Josh loves me. Are we near the Queen's house? I ask Watson. Watson looks around. Not far, he says. Wiggle, waggle, whoopee! My happy tail starts dancing again. Watson and I are almost home. Watson sets off and I follow. There it is, I tell Watson. It's the duck sign and the tree. Diggity dig dig. It's right where I buried it. I bark excitedly as the magic bone appears in the dirt. Here's Watson, creeping over to get some water from the two leg. And then here they are, back here by the, the, si the duck sign and by the tree where Sparky buried the magic bone. That is some amazing bone, Watson admits. I've never seen or smelled one like it. I know, I agree. It's the best smelling bone ever. And you just bite it. And the next thing you know, you're somewhere else. Watson asks me, are you sure? I nod my head. We just have to make sure we both take a bite at the exact same time so we can go home together. Home. The word makes me feel tingly all over. You're going to love home, I tell my new friend Watson. There's always plenty of food and water and Josh. Josh is the best part. Just then, I hear footsteps coming up behind us. I grab my bone and dart into the bushes. It could be the dog catcher. I figure Watson must be right behind me, but he's not. He's where I left him, staring at two two legs who are walking toward him. He doesn't seem scared. Maybe it's because it's easy to tell that these two legs are dog catchers. One of them is too little. The bigger two-leg looks like she could be his mommy. I watch from the bushes as the little two-leg walks over and gently reaches out his hand to Watson. Watson looks up at him but doesn't move. The mommy two-leg says something that I don't understand, but she doesn't sound mad or mean. 
She sounds nice. What do you think? What's the two leg going to do? There's two two legs. One smaller one and one bigger one. I think maybe anybody have an idea of what might happen? Let's see. Keep in mind, see if your answer is right as we continue to read. Watson's tail must think she sounds nice too because it starts to wag. Watson walks over to the little two-leg and lets him pat his head. A minute later, the mommy two-leg scoops Watson up in her front paws. Okay, there's Sparky peeking out from the bushes. There is Watson, uh, Watson scooped up by the two-leg and there's the small two-leg. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think this is a problem? Or is this something good that's going to happen? I think maybe the mom and the little two-leg like Watson, but I don't know for sure. Let's read on to find out. Watson doesn't seem scared at all. In fact, he looks up and gives her a kiss with his tongue. The mommy says something to her little two-leg. A big smile breaks out on his face. The next thing I know, the mommy two-leg begins to walk away with Watson in her arms. The little two-leg follows along next to them. Watson lets out a whimper. It's very quiet, but I can hear him. Home, he says happily. I'm finally going to have a home. Huh? But you already have a home, I called him, with Josh and me. That's your family, Watson explains. This one will be mine, because they chose me. Ah. I think that the mummy and the two, the small tulip are going to take Watson to live with them. That's so exciting for Watson, but I can imagine that it makes Sparky feel a little bit strange. But I bet in the end he'll be a good friend and be happy for his friend Watson. I know how Watson feels. It's great to know a tulip wants you, like the way I know Josh picked me because I make him happy. It'll be just Josh and me again when I get back. But right now, it's just me and my bone, alone, in London, and the dog catcher could be anywhere. Tick-tock, tick-tock, what's that sound? I look down. Right there, at my feet, I spot a little tick-tock toy. It has a crack in it, like the one I broke at home. But this one is still tick-tocking. Hmm. Does that look like the tick-tock toy he had at home? Or does it look similar? Or does it look very different? Similar means the same. Different means not the same at all. Josh would really like this. Quickly, I scoop up the TikTok toy and run back to my bone. Thumpity, thump, thump, thump. Suddenly, my heart starts to pound. What if Watson was wrong? What if the magic bone doesn't send me home? I'll be stuck here in London all alone with other new friends and with the dog catcher still hunting me. There's only one way to find out. I have to be brave. I have to take a bite. Chomp! Wiggle, waggle, woo! Suddenly I feel dizzy. Like my insides are spinning all around, but my eyes outsides are standing still. Stars are twinkling in front of my eyes, even though it's daytime, and all around me I smell food. Fried chicken, salmon, roast beef, but there isn't any food in sight. I wait for the big boom, the boom that makes me feel like I want to run and hide, the boom that makes me feel like I want Josh to hold me tight, the boom that just might take me home. Kaboom! 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 The kabooming stops, just like that. The loud, scary sound is gone. Here he is. He was brave, just like you. He's going to take that bone. He's going to take a big giant chomp. He already did. He had that spinny sound, that spinny feeling. He saw the stars. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think he's going to go home to Josh? Let's see what happens. We're almost there. Slowly I look around. There's my tree, my fence, and best of all, my house. It's not big or made of stone like the Queen's home, but it's all mine. Mine and Josh's. Watson was right. The magic bone has brought me home again. I wonder what Josh would do if he saw my magic bone. Would he take a bite? And if he did, where would he go? What if he didn't know how to get back to me? 
I don't want Josh to wind up in a pound. I better hide my bone so he can't find it. Diggity dig dig. I dig a big hole right near Josh's new flower bed, drop the bone in, and cover it with dirt. I grab the new TikTok toy in my mouth and run through my doggy door. Wow, there's my food bowl and my couch and my table and my... Josh! Josh, 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 Josh! I bark as he walks in the door. My tail goes crazy with excitement. Josh, 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 Josh! Boom, I'm jumping so hard. That I knock Josh right to the floor, but he's not mad. He's laughing and petting my head. Then he notices the TikTok toy I'm holding in my mouth. He reaches between my teeth and pulls it out. It's slimy with spit, but it's still TikToking. I stand there, looking at him so proudly. There he is. Has anybody figured out what that TikTok toy is? TikTok toy? Might be something that we heard or saw in the story, something famous to England. Anybody have a guess? Josh stares at the TikTok toy, then he stares at me. I wish I could tell him where I found the toy. I wish I could tell him about London and Watson and the Bulldog Boys, but Josh doesn't speak dog, and I don't speak two leg. So for now, all I can do is let Josh know how happy I am to be home. I don't need words for that. All I have to do is give Josh a couple of good lick, licks to the face. Slurpity, slurp, slurp. Boy, that magic bone truly was magical. It truly did have powers. It really made a, for a good, good story. I wonder if I had a magic phone where I might go. That's something I'm going to be thinking about today as I um, reflect on this story. I think having a magic phone and dreaming or using my imagination to go somewhere is truly a remarkable idea. Hmm. I'm going to have to think on that and see what I come up with. That's the end of our story as um, the magic bone. Be careful what you sniff for. Sniff for, excuse me. Um, that was quite an interesting story. Lots of um, problems, lots of solutions, lots of different settings in this story. The next time I come back to you, we're going to learn about some of the settings that we um, saw in the story, some settings from London that are very, very famous that maybe someday you will visit. So, I'm going to first give you a firecracker chair for listening so intently to the chapter book. So I'm going to get my firecracker and I'm going to go up to the sky. That was a good one. Should we do it again? Maybe you could do it with me this time. Are you ready? Get your firecracker. Now it's been lit. Now we're going to make it travel to the sky. I think all of you are firecrackers. I think all of you listen nicely, work hard. I think you have great imaginations. I think you make it so special and wonderful for the people that are around you that that's what makes you a true firecracker. Firecrackers bring us joy and happiness. I know they might seem loud sometimes, but they truly are beautiful and wondrous, wondrous and just so incredibly magical. Before we leave, Let's do our, um, our positive affirmation about ourself. And remember, um, I'm going to do it first, and then you can do it with me. And hopefully I won't leave out parts. So here we go. Ready? Watch me. I am smart. I am kind. I am honest. I am silly. I am... Ooh, I forgot. Okay, let's try that again. What comes after the silly one? Um, let's try this again. I'm going to leave out a part. I do it every time. Boo. Okay, we're going to try again. Ready? I am smart. I am caring. 
I am honest. I am silly. I am loved. I forgot a part. Do you remember which one it was? Until tomorrow. I know right when I click off, I'll be thinking about the part that I missed. And yes, I probably should write all this down, but that would be no fun because everybody makes mistakes, me included. And I just need to be myself and not be looking at a piece of paper because that doesn't work for me either. <laughs> so until tomorrow, when we discuss our settings from this chapter book, Sparky, I um, send you my virtual hug. I um, send you all my love and I want you to continue to be your best self all day, every day. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye.